Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all don't mind if I take my time this morning. Y'all gonna be ready. I said y'all gonna be ready. Amen. It's a special ingredient required to be ready. It might not seem like much to some folk, but it's a very important ingredient. That, that, that ingredient is called love of the truth. You, you, you just can't go without loving the truth. Now, before you get beside yourself, I'm going to try to help you understand some things today. So just bear with me. You have to love the truth if you're going to make it. I didn't say love hearing it. I didn't say being aware of it. I didn't say, well, yeah, I know. One of those, you know how them responses some of y'all get, yeah, I know, and yet you don't seem to get it. You know, because that's not exemplary. You know, it's like saying, I love my wife, but I can't get rid of these four girlfriends. Mm. That's like saying, I love my husband, but I just can't help but lie about loving my husband so much that I got to have me some boyfriends. Uh huh. And I love Christ, but I just got to watch my cowboys. Y'all know the devil got all these sports on Sunday, so y'all won't focus on Christ. How many of y'all, I know y'all knew that, right? Really? Some of them looking at me for real. What? It's because he's hoping you don't love the truth. He's trying to get you to love something else. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, have your way in me today, O King. These are your people, Father. We belong to you. And we're here because we're desirous to hear from heaven. Where we struggle with loving your truth so much that we obey you without fear or hesitation. Quicken in us that desire, oh God. That we might be pleasing in our sight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We, uh, we live in a pretty unique time. A lot of folk are very smart and educated. I'm not going to call nobody stupid today if I can help it. But there's a lot of folks that fancy themselves to be knowledgeable because they went to Sunday school when they were little. Maybe had their heart broke, so they got some experience. Perhaps seen a few things that aren't so savory. But when it comes to the word of God and to being obedient to God, they seem to miss the boat sometimes. And, but they'll tell you in a heartbeat, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I'll be, I, I don't want to make no promise and say I'll be at church, but, you know, I got him in my heart. But you got him in your heart, but he can't get you in church. There's something wrong in your heart then. I mean, really, when you think about it, what it look like? I'm, I call Marilyn every day, baby. I just love you more than anything in the world. Hold on a minute, and I'm hugging my girlfriend. Mm. Mm. That that just don't seem right to me. But we want to do God like that. Yeah. Yeah. I love your truth, the Lord, because I love Jesus. I just don't want to do what He said. Right. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a problem. In my mind, now maybe y'all know something I don't know. Or maybe these folks that do that know something we don't know. But without the love of the truth, you're not going to make it. Come on, preacher. How do you know when somebody loves the truth? When you see them obeying God. When you see him obeying God's word. When you see him obeying God's man. Don't matter what the weather is or what your location is, what you're doing. Obedience is paramount to the manifestation of the love of the truth. Now, in layman's terms, that means if you love the truth, we're going to be able to tell it by what you do and where you, how you live. Uh, it's just the truth. 
You can't cuss your mama out and think and, and say you love Jesus. You can say it with your mouth, but like he don't know the difference. Because cussing your parents out ain't honoring your mother and your father. Huh? You can't slap your woman around and call her all kinds of female dogs and carry your Bible and pull your Bible out and try to preach at her. Talk about you need to love Jesus like I do. Well, if that's loving Jesus, I, I can understand the song, if loving you is wrong. <laughs> well, some people just say, well, okay, I don't want that. But let me tell you a little bit about why it's important to have the love of the truth. Without the love of the truth, you are opened up to all kinds of demonics. And they come under the guise of strong delusion. See, without the love of the truth, I'm not talking about without saying it. Anybody can say it. You got pimps say they love their hoes. Come on now. <laughs> I mean, really, that's the truth. That's right. You got women going to jail because they love their child so much they put them in an oven. Uh, you got you you got it all over the place. Love abounds much more in the hearts of hypocrites, it seems to me. Uh, and the, ask the president. He'll tell you he loved Jesus. As-salamu alaykum. That hypocrite. Uh, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take my time. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be civil. Help me, Holy Ghost. But the scriptures are very clear. And y'all probably tell me what scripture you ain't going to. And that's okay. I'm in the book. I'm getting ready to do it. I'm going to take you to the book. Huh? But there's something about God's word that, that compels us. Even Jesus tells us that you don't know God because you don't have the love of God in you. Huh? He said you ain't never seen him nor have you seen his shape. But you want to claim you know him. You want to claim you understand how God moves yet you don't want to obey. You cannot love God in disobedience. Uh, that, that was, thank you, sis. A amen. I'm with you on that. You cannot love God and knowingly and willingly continue to disobey him. You make yourself a hypocrite liar. Amen, Bishop. I'm trying to help you so you can understand. See, I'm talking about witnesses. See, y'all think I'm talking about beating up or for. I'm talking about your testimony. See, because without the love of the truth, you have no testimony of Christ Jesus. You have no testimony of how God has moved in your life continuously, how God has built you up, because you don't even love Jesus. On, yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I pray. No, you don't. Because if you did, you do what he said. On, if you did, you do what the one he sent to you said for you to do. Okay, Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth. If you love the truth, then you obey the truth. See, it's one thing if you acknowledge, yeah, I know it's true, but don't work. I don't see a need. That tells me you don't love the truth. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with it. It tells me you just fake it. You're fooling yourself, and you're drawing unto yourself a spirit of strong delusion. You are making yourself delusional. You are actually convincing yourself that you are what you're not. You're convincing yourself that you're holy, that you're doing what God wants, even though you know that you're not. But that spirit is drawn because you don't have the love of the truth. Let me explain it to you really simple. If you don't love me, why should I come to you? But if you don't love me and you end up with that thug, sorry, hoodlum, pants, sagging, no job, having, lying, hypocrite, backbiting, homemonger as your husband, then that's on you. Because you didn't love what was real. See, a lot of women end up with some sorry men because they can't believe that a man can really be a man nowadays. Uh -huh. Come on, uh oh, he's just too good to me. There's got to be something wrong with him. The only thing wrong with him is he's coming after you. <laughs> he probably ought to leave you alone, get something better. Since you don't want something that's upright and good. Come on, preacher. Amen, Bishop. Amen. Uh, so you don't want the truth. You want rub downs. You want similarities. You want something that's almost there. Something that agrees with you instead of you agreeing with it. And then when you do that, you draw that spirit of strong delusion. Delusional means you cannot see clearly or think rationally within the bounds of reason. That's delusional. 
You are not saying, if you say, I love God, but I'm going to get my head bad Saturday. Uh. And then you want to sing in church Sunday. Uh. There's something wrong with you. Yeah. You don't love the truth. You're trying to fool folk. Uh -huh. That's what's wrong with the church now. Pastors up there pretending to love the truth. They don't want the truth. They want to be admired and pat on the back. And they want their churches big. They want their houses built. They want everything big, bright, and shiny. And they want to be called good right because they up there talking about, oh. Come on now. Uh, and the members want to go because, oh, it just sounds so good. It makes me feel so good. I just felt so good. And I just love the choir. And I just, oh, and, and but, but then why aren't you doing what he's saying? Why you still clubbing? Why you still dressing like a hoe on Saturday night? Uh, why, why you can't put a belt on your kids? Uh, amen. Why you can't go to Bible study? Uh, why is it that you get so mad you got to cut somebody out because they done made you mad? But you don't know. You quitting your job because you upset. I ain't never heard of such a thing. Well, they made me upset. And they still getting paid and you broke. Take two alka seltzer and go to work. Right. Amen, Bishop. Amen, Bishop. Ain't that right? Uh, if the truth, and when you once you start obeying the truth, guess what? You become empowered by the truth. Your your thought presses processes become much clearer. Your understanding of what the will of God is in your life becomes more succinct with what you what you are to do and who you are and what you're becoming. You begin to have clarity. But if you continue to buck obedience, i.e. the truth, then you can't love it. You can't love it. It's just that's okay, go to go to Second Thessalonians real quick. I know y'all, some of y'all look like y'all in a hurry, got something on the stove or something. I, I'm you know, I'm just trying to help you understand. Be careful of what you're allowing in your spirit. Because when you start rejecting truth for whatever little reason you might be given by Satan. Guess what comes? The spirit of strong delusion begin right. to follow you around like a puppy looking for me. Right. When you have found 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, please stand in reverence to the word of God. There's some beautiful babies in this church. I ain't yeah. got I mean, I'm looking at some pretty babies. <laughs> they just so cute. Hey, man, when you find 2 Thessalonians, it's in the New Testament. It's right after 1 Thessalonians. Amen. <laughs> um, I'm going to take my time. Sister Barnes, can I take my time? Amen. See, Sister Barnes said I can take my time. Amen. Amen. Will you look at verse 8? And the word of God says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You may be seated. Amen. I just want to encourage you, quit lying to yourself. See, quit lying to yourself. Quit trying to tell yourself that you really love the truth. But I do, Bishop, but I do. Well, how are you going to tell me that and I've told you 3,500 times at, the, at probably that many times? Come out them britches. Men, come out them mirror rings. Men, pull up your britches and fasten your belt so your pants ain't falling down like you're a woman in the 70s wearing hip huggers. Come on, preacher. Ah. Yeah, I remember when women used to wear them hip huggers. Yeah, yeah. Now you got men wearing hip huggers, pants all the way down here. That ain't cute. You remind me of them women in the 70s. Pull your britches up, man. Gird yourself. Huh? Uh, I'm, I'm going to take my time here because I want you to understand, you can't find truth in Jim Beam. You can't find the peace of truth and the power of truth in W.L. Weller. You just can't find it in a perfect Manhattan or just a straight Manhattan. You can't find it on the porn station. And, I get, and no matter how well they could throw a football, you ain't going to find this truth on the football field. 
Uh, you're just not going to find it. You can't find it in a manger on East 32nd Street. You know, I went to a church the other day, and they had a manger almost the size of our choir stand. Wow. One of those nativity things. And I looked, and I said, oh, the abomination. Had a big old tree in the foyer. I said, oh, my, what an abominable thing to behold. He saw it, wasn't it big? Huh? I remember that church. I remember when I was growing up. Never saw a tree in that church. Never saw nativity things in that same church. Never saw it when I was growing up. Because the pastor would never allow such abominable, base, abominable things in that building. Never saw it. But because the people and the leadership there don't have love of the truth, they fear what man can do for them. They fear what man can do against them. They fear, well, look, if I tell them this, look at what I'm going to lose. Don't want to love the truth. I'm going to tell you something. You can't be saved without loving the truth. I didn't say without hearing the truth. I didn't say without knowing the truth. But you cannot be saved without having the love of the truth because you draw a spirit of strong delusion to yourself. When you start sitting up, pastor, say, get to know people, you don't want to get to know nobody. You're going to become delusional because you're not obeying the truth. You want your loved ones say, Pastor, tell you to get a Sunday school started or a Bible study in your house. You lollygag and you whine why you haven't done it. And, and then you wonder why what you really desire of the Lord is not done. Because you haven't obeyed the truth. Uh, you want a husband? Good. Obey God. Obey God. Do what God compels you to do by his word and love doing it. Don't be doing it bickering and complaining and whining. Always got a reason why you can't, why you ain't, and why you won't. Never just say, oh, really? Is that what God? No problem. Where's the vacuum cleaner? Watch other people blessed be blessed and then wonder why you're not blessed. And you wonder, well, well, I don't understand it. I'm cute. And I'm nice and I ain't hurting nobody. God said, make your kids come to church. You giving them an option. How are you going to have young people in your house? In your house. You the parent, but they telling you what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. Well, that's fine as long as they're paying rent somewhere else. But as a parent, y'all need to hear me. I'm trying to help you make it in. I looked and everybody wanted to put my sister in heaven. I don't know if she made it. But I know it based on what I've seen and the last conversation I had. It's very slim chance that she didn't. It's a very, very big chance that she didn't. Uh, but everybody want to put her in a better place. There's something wrong with that, ain't it? Now, I, I don't have a hell, but I do know that you can bring damnation on yourself if you don't have the love of the truth. You can, if, if your daddy and your parents tell you to get up and do something, you guess what? You ought to love it. You ought to love doing it because a lot of people don't have parents. Some folks don't have mama there. Some folks don't have daddy there. Huh? But, but, but we want to go and, and, and let, let people try to fill our heads. And you young people, listen to me. Quit letting people fill your head with delusions of grandeur. Oh, girl, I don't see why you going. You ought to get you some of these kind of jeans. You know those kind that just hug your body? Them little stretch jeans everybody wear. Right. Women are so messed up because they don't love the truth. That's why you see them walking around half naked. Go to the store. You see daddy with his daughter. Daughter look like she just walked off the basketball court at a Spurs game during halftime. Half naked like the Silver Stars. Ain't that what they call them? That's what they call them little freaky looking women. I'm trying to help you understand something. Do you know why you see young men walking around having no respect for women? They think the woman ought to give them children before they even give them their name? Because they don't love the truth and the parents don't enforce the truth. The parents let them do, well, they're young. Yeah, they got coffins for young people. Hell is going to be filled up with a bunch of young people. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a whole lot of them because they, the parents didn't love the truth enough to tell the child, no, I'm not asking you if you're going to church. You don't have that option. Right. Huh? You'll send them to the store to get you a Pepsi, but you can't tell them to come to church. Come on, preacher. Come on. 
You'll let them stay out until all kinds of hell nights. But you won't make them get up early and go and worship the God of glory. But you'll show up. Oh, yeah, you'll come in with bells and whistles on. Uh, and know you wrong because you know you got kids you left at home in the bed. Well, they were up late. That problem. That's their problem. I'll drag their nappy head out the back bed so quick. Drag you by your ankles. What you doing, mama? What you doing, daddy? You, I'm dragging you to church. You like drugs? I'm going to drug you to church. Hey, but, but what if they leave me? I don't want them to think I'm mean. Who cares? You're trying to save their soul. You're trying to save their soul. You want them in glory. But you're trying to negotiate because you love God. But you just don't, you know, they have a right to make their own decisions. Show me that. Somebody, all of you people, you liberals in disguise, show me where the Bible says, parents, make sure you give your children the right to decide whether or not they're going to go to church. Somebody, come on. Some of y'all know you talk. I'm talking to you. Come on. If that, well, then why are you hypocriting? Come on, uh, and come to me quick and then get mad at me too. Go home just soaking. I hate when he does that. I just hate when he does that. It's almost like he's in my house. Thank God. I'm just telling you what the Lord's given me. Huh? If you say you love God, then you will obey him. You will enforce that love in your home, parents. You, you don't give your child an option to do something because you want to be cool. You want to be the one. I wish Terrence Jr. would have jumped up in my house talking about, hey, pop big old mohawk and some earrings. The fall would have been great and swift. I would have gave him the clippers and gave him a minor time to make sure that mole and the hawk was gone. That's right. My daughter, if she wore makeup by the time she was 15 years old, I didn't know about it. That's right. I wasn't having it. Pretty girls ain't got to wear no bunch of gunk on their face. Quit letting the world dictate to you what it is. You know, look, God God will mag be magnified in you in the beauty of holiness. Did you know that? Uh, but if you keep this the truth, you just want to hear it like a beautiful song. Uh, they come, they say, come on, let's go hear what the prophet's going to say today. Like it's a beautiful song, but they don't want to receive it. They just want to be able to say they got dressed up and went to church. I showed up at church. I know the Lord really reached out to me. Uh -huh, you going to get some beer today, baby? Uh, I know the Lord. And that night be cussing each other out. Because you're delusional. You're, see, and the devil is trying to play tricks on the church. Because the church won't take heed to the things that they hear. See, taking heed means you apply them with great speed. You don't keep, keep lollygagging on this thing. Let's look at what the scripture says. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. The deceive, unrighteousness is deceivable. It's a deceiving way of living. You'll think you're okay. I mean, really, you're on the surface, Tony Romo seems to be an okay guy. But I guarantee you, Tony Romo probably don't know how many books in the Bible. I don't know that he doesn't. But I guarantee you he's not uh, as given to prayer. I believe his mouth can, can bring out cursing and blessing. I know that's what they do on football fields. I've been on them. And they'll, they'll cuss you out one minute and do this the next. Hello? Um, they get upset and they, 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 people get upset and they find reasons not to go to church. Well, I've been for the past six weeks in a row. I could take time off and go to the car races. I could take time off and go to the concert. I could take time out and go visit my mother who's a devil worshiper. I could take time out and go help my granny put up a tree in their house. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. Come on, uh, see, I had a brother with wisdom called me. And the brother said, is there, is there, with the, I, I do handiwork. I said, okay. He said, and the lady wanted me to put some lights on her house for her. I said, it's a job? Yeah, do the job. Amen. Do the job. There's nothing wrong. You can't do the job. If you worked at 7-Eleven, somebody walk up to the counter and want to buy some, some cigarettes and some beer, it's your job to, to ring them up. That's your job. Amen. That's when if you sell a car and somebody buy it and go rob a bank, did you 
You just sold the car. Okay, you doing your job. Amen. Now, if somebody tell you, can you help me get this house, this tree in my house? No, you ain't got to do that. Uh, you ain't got to put no Santa Claus with a blow-up machine on top of the house for them. Got to get somebody else to do that. Because a light is a light no matter what color it is. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me go back here. Because I want you to understand. He said those people perish. He's very clear. He said this is why they perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Now, notice that word receive. In other words, in order, you have been, he said, they're given opportunity to love the truth. But they refuse the opportunity. They said, now I'm going to hear you. Have you ever talked to one of them people and they bob in the head all the time? Because, and you know they really don't hear what you're saying. And they're like, yeah, 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 right, 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 right. Right? Yeah, I know. And then they give you the yeah, I know, that, that language that the mother Indians speak. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right. And next thing you know, they're doing exactly what you said they shouldn't be doing according to the word of God. Come on, preacher. And they give you all kinds of reasons, though. Yeah, I know. And then they look at you funny when you bust them at the Home Depot. Huh. Or when you bust them at the Jack in the Box. Or when you see them walking down that dark street when husband at work and they supposed to be at home. And they're holding somebody else's hand. Uh, and it ain't their kid. Uh, mm-hmm. And you blow your horn. Praise the Lord! <laughs> <laughs> when y'all see people doing, bust them out with love. <laughs> Say, glory to God, how you doing, sister? <laughs> Where brother so-and-so? He at the house, this your cousin? <laughs> <laughs> bust them out, put it up. But when you receive the truth into your spirit, the love of the truth. Notice he's not just saying the truth. He's saying love of, you can't, you want to be corrected when you're wrong. You want to be encouraged. You want to be able to be told this is how you should do this. This is a court, this will please God. This is right. And, and you know what, I'm, the, the thing about it is, I even tell everybody, read it yourself. Don't blame Bishop. I think that's just Bishop. Well, I didn't write this. I mean, really, I would love to take credit. Because some of y'all, but, but y'all wouldn't want me to take credit because I would alter some things. Some of y'all would make it. Some of us wouldn't make it. I probably wouldn't have made it if it was left up to me. But this is the thing that, 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 that gets me. And if you'll listen to people and you talk to people, watch them. They'll tell you they're just as saved as you are. I was told the other night that the problem wasn't my family. The problem was me. Terry, it ain't ain't nothing wrong with them. It's you. I said, really? Oh, okay. I was told that on two different occasions by two different people in the same family. But I I, I wonder, I, I had to look and I said, these people are delusional. They're delusional because they don't want to believe and they have no love for the truth. They don't mind hearing it. They don't mind that you know it. They don't mind that, you know, everybody got, you know, they believe the way they believe. And I, 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 No. I don't care what political correctness say. I am not going to a mosque and eating with them folks. Amen. Why am I going to be sitting at the table of devils calling myself the king of kings, son? Huh? If I, if I was the advisor to the mayor, I would have said, don't go. Don't you go to that heathenistic place. You don't have to come down off the wall and go to the valley of Ono. Oh right? Hello? You see, some people, they don't love the truth and they don't realize that they've lost their, their vision because they're so accustomed to disobedience. And delusion comes to you and tells you you're doing okay. Oh, that's okay. He'll be merciful. That's okay. He'll be merciful. That's okay. He'll be merciful. That's okay. You in the clear. Ooh, as long as the pastor didn't say nothing to you directly, you okay. He didn't call you out. So you must be okay. It was okay that you called that guy behind you and you texting so-and-so. So as long as she don't know you texting, you all right. Oh, it's quiet in word, eh? I'm just trying to help you. You cannot make it into glory 
if you don't love the truth. Now, when you're witnessing to people, you have to use the wisdom of God. You have to understand that everybody's not going to jump on the bag wagon of holiness. Everybody's not going to grab hold of this because those people are blind. They cannot see. They don't understand the power of this truth and what it means to love Jesus with a pure heart. Jesus never sent us and said for us to go to a negotiating table. The negotiations was done long before we were born. Um, but Jesus did tell us to accept what the negotiations brought about. Amen. That's why he said it is finished. Jesus said it's done. Jesus said the sacrifice was acceptable. This thing is already done. But if you don't love what is required of you by the truth to do and to be and to become, then why should he let you in the house? Huh? I don't understand. You wonder why these young men, young women go out there and get, get knocked up and, and have to go take shots that you don't know they're taking. You know, because some of these, they'll go and take shots that you don't, mama don't even know about it. Huh? And they go out there and they invest in Trojan. Because you too busy being a cool mom. You too busy thinking your son, he, he's the one. They the one because they're good looking and they, they're smart. But they're lost. You want to put dirt on them and watch them say, and, and let a, I'm not going to stand over a hellion and say he's in a better place. I might say he's in a nice casket or she's in a nice box. And, and, but I ain't going to say she's in a better place if I know that they, they kicked against it. Uh, and, and then you go, get mad at me. Well, how come he didn't say he went to heaven? Because he didn't. How come you didn't bring him to church? You can't bring him to church, but you want him to go to heaven. You can't bring, you can't, you scared of him? You want to buck a grown man, but a child you can't make get out the bed. Get your nappy head up out the bed. Put your clothes on. You're going to church. And if you don't go to church, then you need to take a tent with you. Because you can't stay here no more. Huh? But you can't do that. Yes, I can. Yeah, if I know you have reasonable accommodation somewhere else, I can. Here's your reasonable accommodation. A tent and a sleeping bag. And an extra blanket. Here's a couple of bricks for a pillow. Amen. Amen. Men, if you're the man of the house, you tell them children, get up off your butt. If I'm going to church, you're going to church. That's right, period. It's ain't, I'm not asking you, well, mom, he's going to make me go to church. Mom ain't got nothing to do with this. You're a man, buck me. Come and jump in my face. And when you get through trying to catch your breath and you want to use my phone and call the police. I ain't, uh, look, grab him by the neck of the neck, show him where the front door is. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. Because if you want your children to go to glory, then you need to love the truth enough to obey God and bring them up in the way in which they should go. Quit letting your children run your house. How many husbands do you have, woman? Because your sons ain't supposed to be running you. Come on now. Mm, it's tight up in here. Your daughters ain't supposed to be running you. Amen. Oh, it's quiet. These young folks, young folks, y'all, come on. Y'all be bad at Bishop. I'm trying to help y'all. But y'all to see how these young folks looking at me like. Uh, check your breathing at the door. But, but if, if you understand when you're witnessing and people have trouble with it, that's because they've, they've drawn to themselves a spirit of strong delusion. Let me explain how that works. The more you love the truth, the further away strong delusion gets. The more you operate by the spirit of the Holy Ghost and obeying God and doing that which is right and making sound judgments, the further you repel the spirit of strong delusion. The more you find that you're obeying God with joy in your heart and you're loving God and you're loving God's people and you're spending time alone with him and you're meditating on his word day and night and you're seeking to do that which is right, good, and holy to please our God, the further away it becomes. Uh, and, and, and he can't touch you. But he's going to linger long enough. He's going to have his binoculars on just waiting for you to, to disobey. Just waiting for you not to love the truth. In a particular thing. It doesn't mean to cross, but in a particular thing. And every time you, you show forth that spirit, it gets a little closer. Wait a minute. They're rejecting the truth? Oh, they're they not obeying? Wait a minute. Is that Johnson over there? What you mean he, what? 
Didn't Bishop tell him? And he just, what? Oh, wait, what? And, and then when he get real close, he start touching you and testing you. See if he can sway you this way or that way. And then after a while, you'll love it because you're going to be thinking, rock the boat. Don't rock the boat, baby. You would think, boy, that's a gentle caress. Man, this disobedient of God ain't too bad. He ain't killed me yet. Oh, I'm still all right. I'm still making good money. Oh, strong delude. Then he'll just, excuse me, brother. He'll just grab you by your head. Say, look over here. Look over there. Ain't it all right? Ain't he all right? <laughs> Ain't he all right? Hey, you thinking you right? Then you all messed up. Because you don't keep on. Because uh, you know the Bible. What make you think God is uh, like going to clock out next month? I'm going to hold on until God, God forget about me. Wow. Let me tell you something. You don't want God to forget about you. You better make sure that you keep yourself in check. Uh, the love of the truth. Let me show you something, because you'll blind yourself, and you'll be thinking you're seeing clearly. Well, I just don't think it's anything. And you know, I asked somebody, and I'm going to jump the subject here. Just say, I'm on the same thing. But I, be, I talked to my wife. I've, I've been breaking my brain for years, trying, and I mean that figuratively, not literally. Why is it so hard for women to come out of pants? I, I thought, Lord, why is that so hard? It ain't hard for me not to put on a dress. Right. <laughs> it really, it's not hard for me not to put on lipstick and some earrings. Bro, I can't imagine you in a nice uh, 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 coach dress. I can't do it, bro. I, I mean, even if Pete Diddy designed it, I can't see you in a, in a dress and a skirt and a nice blouse. I just can't see it. But I asked the Lord, I said, why is that so hard for women? He said, because women are by nature, the way I designed them, they're designed to be, to have a spirit of rebellion about them. And, and, and I said, really? He said, yeah, because they, they need to humble themselves because of how magnificent I made them. I've given them a lot of tools that men don't have. And I had to challenge their willingness to be obedient. See, and so, because that's a hard thing for women. It's hard for a woman nowadays to be told by a man what she can wear. Ain't it? Oh, man, y'all, come on. Look at all these women. The women that's telling the truth. They love the truth. They're doing this. Yeah, it's hard. Because y'all y'all just don't see nothing. You American. This is 2015. Why, why would God have a problem with that? Well, let your husband come in with his boyfriend, and you'll see. Uh-huh. See, so, so I said, Lord, why do you do it? He said, because I want them to really love me. I want them to love me so much that it doesn't matter what they dress. If, they, if I tell them don't wear it, they're going to love me enough to say, Lord, if it please you, King. Because if you can't please your, your husband and his design, he, he wants you to please your husband. He said, he wants you to appeal to your Because if you can't appeal to your husband in obedience, how are you going to appeal, appeal to God? How are you going to appeal to God and you can't even humble yourself away from some Levi's or some stretchy pants? And think it's cute. A, a blouse ain't a dress. A blouse is a blouse. I, got, I had four sisters. A blouse, I know what a blouse is. Talk about, uh, and if it is a dress, it's too short. Your dress needs to come right there. It does not make you look old. Guess what? Young women have been getting married and having babies with long dresses on for a long time. A guy, ask any guy. He don't care if you have on a dress. He just want to know, are you a real woman? Nowadays. He want to check your neck, measure your hands. <laughs> he want, he want to, he want, <laughs> he want to see your birth certificate. <laughs> he want to, uh, he that's all, he don't care. He, he you ain't wearing. He, uh, and it gets men's eyes. It'll get your husband's eyes. He come home every day and you got on a cute little skirt dress and you looking like you really care about how you look. And you going to the H-E-B and you looking like a real woman instead of one of these floozy, slutty people out there? Uh, I looked at a man the other day. He was going in the store with his woman. And she had on some tight black thingies, what they call them, uh, yoga bridges. Pretty woman. And this man is walking in. And I said, that don't bother him that I can see almost every curve on his wife? That's nasty. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I, I, I just, Sister White, man, you nasty heifer walking out like that. If my wife, my wife would never, she didn't do a dress like that when she wasn't saved. My wife didn't wear no tight little shoulder cheek shorts. 
My wife wouldn't do it. Even when she wasn't saved, she wouldn't do it. That's right. But I, I look, and, and because they're delusional. And if you're going to church and you're hearing the truth and you're hearing the scriptures and you've been told and you've been given understanding and you insist that it's okay because I'm riding a horse, wow. I haven't read that part. <laughs> huh? It's okay to get drunk because you lost a loved one? Uh -huh. Come on, I ain't read that part. Hey, you read that? You, anybody show? Okay. Because I would have been ossified. <laughs> y'all don't even know what some of y'all like. Ossa what? <laughs> huh? But it's not cute to, to hide short pants in your backpack and go to school. Come on, it's not cute to have your friend bring your pants to school. That ain't cute. You ain't slick. Huh? It ain't cute to be hugged up on somebody you're supposed to be and quit. Huh? It ain't cute. Thinking you're getting away with something, rubbing all up and being rubbed up on. Huh? You're going to keep on and you're going to get delusional and they're going to have to name it something. And then you're going to hear from the child support office. Yep, yep. Huh? Hello, you keep on. You're going to get delusional. Thank your boys don't swim. Uh, 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 hello, a latex can break. Uh-huh. She can forget a pill. She might be trying to snare you because you cute. And your daddy got a business. She might be trying to see that's the kind of daddy I need for my babies. I'm, I'm on it, ain't I, Eric? I'm, I'm preaching the gospel. Amen. This is real. If you don't love the truth, then you can get snared by these things. That's why you got so many young women messed up that opened up to these young men, and these young men don't want to do nothing but play. Play. They, all they want to do is just play, and then they leave you for somebody else, probably your first cousin or your niece, and then your heart all broke up because you done gave him the best part of you. You know, Brother Hyman went along with it. Hello, and now you all left holding the bag. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And then you left naming something. And then, well, that's okay, I don't need his help. Really? Well, you needed his help getting there. Make that boy quit school and get a job. He should have thought about that before he became delusional. Yeah. Uh-huh. See, I said we want to go to heaven, but we don't want to love the truth enough to get there. We don't want to love the truth enough to obey God. We don't want to raise up a standard in our children. We don't want to raise up a standard in our going out and our coming in. We want to teach our children how to be smart hypocrites. I'm going to teach you how to go to church and pretend. And then I'm going to show you how to go home. And then when, when we ain't got nobody around, we can go ahead. I, I don't know. We can hide us hide some britches in the attic. Uh, uh, brother ain't smoking no dope no more. As long as you ain't around, he ain't smoking no dope. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. on, Call himself vaping. Vaping my eye. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. So when you're witnessing, you got to understand, people are locked into that mentality. Yeah. Cheating, sliding, slipping, dipping. Yeah. Ain't that right? I know I'm right. They'll like get mad at you too for telling the truth. They will get upset with you for telling the truth because they don't love the truth. And then you'll get mad at them because they won't receive the truth. That's why I'm trying to help you understand why they can't receive the truth. Because they're blind. Let me show you. They don't know they're blind. Look at what he says. I'm in John chapter 9, verse 39. He says, and Jesus said, for judgment I came into this world that they which see not might see. So the ones that don't see, can't see. Those that wish they could see, wish they could know, could really see now. Those that were lost and said, I'm sick and tired of being hurt. I'm sick and tired of living like this. You know what I'm talking about? I'm sick and tired of waking up in my own vomit. I'm sick and tired of going from one boyfriend to the next. I'm sick and tired of having all these babies and ain't got no husband. I'm sick and tired of have, making all these babies and I ain't got no job. I'm sick and tired of sick and tired. Well, you need to see your way out of that sick and tired, right? Amen. That's what Jesus said. You need to see your way. So those that do not see might see. He came for just that thing. Those that don't know the truth and want to love the truth, he came for that. He said, oh, you, you've been looking. The, the, remember the tomb, I mean, the, the altar unto the unknown God. They wanted to know. But they didn't know. They, were, they, they tried their best, and then God sent Paul to them. He said, I'm going to tell you about this unknown God you, you're talking about. 
And then Jesus says that they which see not might see, and they which see they that that and that they would see might be made blind. See, you're gonna run across a bunch of folks think they know stuff. And like I got like my, my one of my kids one other night got upset with me and said, See, the problem I have with you is this you just think I don't know the Bible. No, I don't think you don't know the Bible. I know you don't know truth. I know he don't love the truth. Because if he did, he'd be here. Or someplace where the truth is being taught. If he did, he would agree with me. Huh? You can't, well, let's agree to disagree. That's malarkey. That was, that was fabricated in the gates of hell. Let's agree to disagree. So now he's saying that those that think they know won't know. See, folks will look at you like you dumb. What you mean you ain't got no Christmas tree? Well, and then they'll look at you like they feel sorry for you. Oh, you're not, you don't do Christmas? Oh, why not? Are you Jehovah Witness? That's all they know about Jehovah's Witnesses. They got a green book. They knock on your door when you're napping. And they don't do holidays. They have no idea about Jehovah's Witness. But they want to lump you in that because they're going to hell. Now, they're going to hell. You're going to heaven. And they feel like you don't do all. But what if you don't believe in the baby Jesus? And you want to look at him and just laugh, right? Really, you do, but you know you ought to save us. So you all look at him and say, man, look, you do realize he over 2,000 years old. <laughs> he like, Come on, really? How long? What, did he have arrested development? What? <laughs> really? Could you see a little baby going to the temple with a whip, beating the buyers and the sellers out the temple? Are you out of your mind? Why would you? Do you know why they want to keep him a baby? Because you don't have to obey a baby. A baby is relying upon you. Do you know why they, the Catholics like to keep a dead man on a cross? Because a dead man can't do nothing from a cross. See, but we know that he is at the right hand of the throne of God. Huh? We know that he's a man. And he yet lives. Huh? And there's no swaddling clothes. Jesus ain't swaddling clothes. He ain't in no swaddling clothes. No, he ain't, he ain't being held by Mary. If he, if he is, there's something wrong. Huh? Mary too old and he too big. But when you look at what Jesus is saying, he said, and some of the Pharisees, that's them church folk, the, the people that just like to go to church and say they know Jesus and they have him in the heart, them kind of folk. You know the kind. Come on, y'all know, because some of y'all was like that. Uh, I'm glad y'all growing up. But I'm trying to show you this so when you witness to people, you'll know what you're talking about. That's what this is about. It's so, so you can know what you're talking about. When you witness to people, you'll have an understanding why they can't get it. So you have to be patient with them. Okay? And so he said, and the, some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto are you we blind also? In other words, you're talking about us. See how that word hit them? Jesus didn't even have to point them out. They knew because he spoke the truth, it hit them. Because they don't have a love of the truth. So what else? Oh, so we blind too? Are we blind like these? Oh, so you saying we don't know? We the church folk. I've been to seminary. I got me three degrees. Huh? I went to A&M, M&A, and all them other ones. I went to all of them. And, and, and I'm a bulldog and a crimson titer. Huh? I'm an Aggie and an Ag M. I'm whatever you want to call me. So how you going to tell me I don't know the word? You know how the people get? Because they're delusional. Because if they love the truth, they would say, well, look, give us vision. Help us see. Help me know. But look at what Jesus said. Jesus said unto them, if you were blind, you should have no sin. Mm, mm, mm. He said, but now you say we see. Therefore, your sin remain with you. In other words, if you think you all right and you still in sin, then you still in sin. But if you know that you don't see. You know that you don't understand, then he'll bring you understanding. Amen. He'll give you wisdom. He'll pour out the spirit of truth upon you. All he wants you to do is acknowledge, will you receive the love of the truth? Hallelujah. When truth is presented to you, will you love it enough to obey it? Or will you bank on, well, well, I just don't want to believe my grandmother went to hell. She was a Catholic, and she baked cookies for everybody. Wow. And she, she was so sweet. She would feed puppies and birds. You know, I don't know what, what God had in plan for your grandma, but if she was praying the statues, she's lost. 
That's just the truth. He, he's not going to share his glory with another. Amen. He's just not going to do it. And, I, and, and Okay. And if she prayed to a plastic doll, I mean, really? You ever want to go up to one of them little things and just see if they'll talk if you squeeze the foot? You ever, I, one of them little dolls they be having out there? Yeah. Just squeeze the foot and they say, hello. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm taking my time. Amen. Sister Barr said I can take my time. Amen. Amen. So now you have this understanding that God has given them through, uh, 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 through, well, through wisdom and, and through Christ that their sins remain. Now, that, what is that saying about you? If you become delusional, if you know you hear the word, if God tells you, for instance, first, Brother White, yes, Lord, you can't wear bikini uh, swim trunks to the beach. And I said, well, Lord, what's wrong with that? <laughs> other than hilarious <laughs> and I do it anyway so why shouldn't God send a shark to bite me and a gold uh, and, and a jellyfish to sting we wonder and, you know and so the world wonder I can't believe God took my cousin I couldn't believe God why shouldn't he he had opportunity to get ready she had opportunity to get ready just because a person gets killed horrifically don't mean they're going to heaven Huh? You could die a miserable death and still go to hell. Your, the, the, the type of death you, or misery you experience doesn't determine your location in the end. What determines your location in the end is whether or not you have the love of the truth abiding in you. And so when you witness to people, just ask them, do you really love the truth? Well, here is some truth for you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe it in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, we just read where the deceivableness of unrighteousness, they will perish because they don't have the love of the truth. We just read that in, in Thessalonians. And so when we tell them that and when we show them that God loves us and that God will give us that peace that surpasses all understanding, and when you realize that it's because God loves us and because God has given us of his only begotten son that we ought to love the truth. We ought to be able to humble ourselves and to be a witness to this dark world that's encased in a spirit of strong delusion. These people can't, they think that they can actually control the weather now. There's something wrong when you can get 200 nations to delu delusionally agree that we can affect climate change. We're going to drop the temperature of the planet. You can't even stop adultery. You can't, how you, you can't even guarantee Romo's going to win a Super Bowl, but you're going to stop the planet from getting hot. You can't even make Barack Obama a Christian, and you're going to try to get the world. Y'all know he's Muslim, right? Okay, I just want to let y'all know that. He, 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 he is, he's just... And 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 uh, the wicked witch of the West is trying to take office, so y'all pray for her. Yeah, she wicked. That's a wicked woman. Y'all need to. I'm trying to help. You. Her name is Hillary. Don't that sound like a witch name? Right. Hillary. <laughs> don't it? Y'all pray for me. I'm mean, okay. I'm just trying to. Don't be offended. Jeremiah 6 and 14. Look at verse 13 and 14 with me. Jeremiah, Old Testament. It says, For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. He said, They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. That's delusional. When you think you can solve a problem that's too big for you, you can't even adjust the thermostat right, but you're going to change the temperature of the planet. You can't even stop California from burning, but you're going to change the temperature of the planet. Huh, you're going to try to tell, you can't even make it right to where women can't legally go and kill unborn babies, but you're going to change the temperature of the planet. That's strong delusion. There's something wrong with you. 
But you'll sit up there and say you love Christ. Right. Separation of church and state while you light this country's Christmas tree in the name of Jesus. Uh. You devil you. Uh. That, that's delusional, brother. They'll send your kid home for wearing Jesus is Lord of all on their T-shirt. But yet they got Rudolph and the three wise men and all that other stuff in your schools. Have your children singing parappa pum pum in the school choir. But they want to fire you for praying for a child that just got through throwing up. There's something wrong with them. It's called strong delusion. They're saying peace, peace. I heard a man say, we don't have to have war to have peace. I said, what planet are you from? How, 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 how in the world does that make sense? How is it? I've never known. I've, that is one of the most ridiculous things. He might, I almost said, are you a sissy? Or just stupid? It's, I, I wasn't going to use that word today. This can something or other. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of here, Holy Ghost. Help me. Somebody say, help him, Holy Ghost. Help him, Holy Ghost. <laughs> But the people don't have shame because they're delusional. You see women with their daughters and they dress it like their daughter. The woman's 60 years old and the daughter's 20 years old. And she got as much of her mama's out as her. Her child. Short so tight. I can't even see. How can you walk with your daughter and your daughter showing you all her business? And you act like it's nothing. Isn't she beautiful? You devil. Huh? That's why girl. You Okay. So. These unsaved men ain't supposed to want to get with these unsaved women in college that's dressing like hoes. They, they're not disciplined enough. They don't have Christ in them. Guys walking around with their baggy pants on, down to here, no shirt on at college, trying to get a degree in uh, disconsumptive arismology. And, uh, and these little girls walking around without a care in their world. They got their backpacks on, their Gucci bags, and their shorts up to here. Huh, and they little shirts on there in college. But just because I'm dressed like this don't mean you need to think I'm looking good and that you should have me. How is that going to happen and he's on acid? How is that going to happen he's smoking joints that the government said he could smoke? Huh, you think that man ain't going to get a rise? You think that man ain't going to look at you and think he ought to have you? Why not? He's just on the football field. He get everything else he want. Why not you? He'll do a Kobe Bryant in a minute. Rape and lie about it. Yeah, y'all know Kobe Bryant raped that girl. But y'all will buy his tickets. Y'all can't wait to see his retirement ceremony. Delusional. I'm trying to be nice today. huh? But then you want to talk about, well, is rape in colleges is going down. Don't tell your daughters not to go to college. Baby, get a trade. Don't go there. No, just get, get your degree online. Before they have you on a line. They used to call them trains. Put something in your drink because you're so smart. Huh? That's right. You think your buds and your buddies that don't know Jesus going to help you. Huh? Well, that's my friend. That's my friend. Yeah, your friend will set you up. Because they'll secretly say, who she make me say, always talking about Jesus this and Jesus that. Uh, but if you don't love the truth, God will let them. If you have the love of the truth, God will show you. Don't go there. I'm trying to help you. So when you're witnessing the people that's out there and they don't know you, Jesus, don't get upset with them. You just, you rebuke the devil and you pray and you try to educate them. I'm going to tell you something. I talk to a lot of people. I listen to how people try to witness to people. And I can tell they're really not skillful in the word of God on how to witness. That skill takes skill. It takes good fishing. You got to know when to go fishing. You, I learned. About a year and a half, two years ago, you don't fish in windy days. You know who taught me that? My wife. I know because I'm a city boy. I, I, don't, I, I just learned how to fish not too long ago, and I'm still learning. But I can fish for souls. Look, at that, look around. Amen. And I can teach other folks how to fish for souls. Amen? Amen? Ain't that right? Amen. So let me tell you something about this spirit of strong delusion. If God gives you something to do that you know God did it, first of all, God's not going to go around your pastor. Right. He'll confirm it in me. That's right. and, and he'll just confirm. He may not tell me first, but he'll confirm it in me. So if you come to me and say, well, the Lord want me to do this, God will confirm that in me. Even if it's not something that's wrong, God will still, because why? I'm the shepherd. 
I'm the shepherd of this church. And that's what God, God holds me responsible for the decisions that are made upon these sheep. That, you belong to God. Amen. So it's my job to do that. I appreciate that level of respect that I'm giving. I'm giving that respect here. And I appreciate it. I mean, children, even little Bobby asked me about starting a football team. He had enough respect to come to me and inquire, can we do this? Is there anything, way we could do this? Huh? Brother Eric came to me about going to do something for a brother, uh, a brother in prison to, to help people in prison. That's respect. That's the kind of stuff God blesses. Amen. Because once you start thinking you're island under yourself and that, well, the truth is some, you know, some of it, yeah, but I just don't believe God really, you know, let Jesus walk on water. I, you really believe he walked on water. You really believe that there were giants in those days? Well, yeah, ask the archaeologists that are uncovering them. That I used to wonder, why they think it was hard for giants to draw them big old birds in South America? They were tall enough to know how to draw. They... The giants drew those things. They were underwater. When the water receded, it was still there. So God could give us this thing. Come on, y'all. I'm not blowing your mind. Y'all know giants helped build the pyramids, right? Come on, y'all. Y'all got to gotta be kidding me. Read your word. Do your research. See, and so when you go out there to the world, they, so, so you really believe? Yes is their answer. <laughs> then you ask them, why don't you? Amen. And see what their answer is. They say, well, what? Uh, uh, well, well what? and then when you say, well, where is that in the Bible? You show me. Now, well, you the one that brought it up, but yeah, you show me. They'll do that. That's a, that's a spirit. That's a childish devil inside of people that do that. I'm almost through. I'm going to tell you why this is important for you to understand. Because we're living in a wicked time. And people think just because God hasn't destroyed it yet, he must be on vacation. They said, long time now they've been saying his return. Where is his return? They've been saying that for a long time. Well, you didn't know it for a long time, especially if you're only 20. You've only known that for about five years. Huh? So, so it's not a very long time for you. But he's going to come back because I love that truth about him. He said he was going to die on a cross. And he did. He said he was going to raise up in three days. And he did. He said that he would not leave us comfortless. And he didn't. He said he's coming back again. And he will. But you must allow him to cultivate into you a spirit that makes you love the truth so much. That if God tells you to call your enemy and offer prayer, you call him with great speed. If God tells you to do something that is right, good, and holy, you don't debate the issue. You go to it. And you do it without murmuring or complaint. And then you wait for the blessing of the Lord. Because once you do that, then you'll begin to see the mercies, the power, and the glory and the provision of God in your life, the likes of which you've never seen. People will ask you, how did you do this? I didn't know you were going to open a business. The Lord told me to. The Lord did this. This is what, let me tell you, I don't know if I've told some of you this, and I'm, I'm about ready to finish. But the, my convenience store and cafe that we had downtown, I didn't lay out plans for that. I was at work. And the Lord told me, when you're ready to leave, you can go. I had a great job. I worked four days on, three days off. I had great benefits, medical and dental. The ball. I, I was the boss. And the Lord spoke to me while I was at work and said, when you're ready to leave, you can go. I said, I don't want to go nowhere. Why? Why would you say that, Lord? <laughs> what you doing? I like this job. What are you talking about? I was, man, I was doing all right. So I'm mopping the floor, and then the Lord said it again. He said, when you're ready to leave, you can go, and I will bless you. That boosted my faith. I remember telling my wife to pray for my faith. My wife said, your faith? I said, yes. I said, I have struggles in my faith. And so I was on the phone with a woman named Gina. Because her daughter said, give her a call. I gave her a call. We were worshiping downtown. 
And she had just told us we can no longer use that kitchen. You remember that? I called up. And we were talking about a chocolate cake that she was going to make me. And out of nowhere, she says, hey, uh, Brother White, you know that store that's in the building? I said, yes. She, Do you know anybody that might be interested in buying? And I said, yes. She said, who? I said, me. And I looked at the phone. I had no plans. It just came out just like that. That was the way the conversation. She said, who? I said, me. And I looked at the phone. I said, what? In a grocery store. Come on, grocery That little store. And she said, are you serious? She said, well, I can let you rent it for little or nothing. I rented that store for six years for $250 a month. And had use of the kitchen. And had use of the dining room. And had use of a big storeroom. Because I listened to the voice of truth. I dare to trust God. It's not God don't always have to make deals with you. Well, if you do this, I'm going to do that. If God say open a business, open a business. God say go to Pyroth, go to Pyroth. God say come out the britches, burn them, tear them up, throw them away, make skirts out of them. Hello, make skirts out of them. Make throw pillows, do something, but get, get out of them and watch God bless you. Watch God bless you. Do you understand? The more you learn and the more you start loving what God is telling you, I'm telling you, just try it. Okay. I'm not sure, but okay. Lord, if this is what you want, you told me to, bam, I'm going to do it. And then when God start blessing you, talk, you would stand up and give your testimony. Talk, I remember five years ago, Lord told me to start a business. I wasn't about that. But God just would not let it go. He kept on until I said, okay, I'm going to start this business, Lord. I don't know. You know your business is going to grow really big. It's going, you're going to have to get another place. Okay? All right, I'm telling you. All right? You have to hire some folks, too. Don't be scared to hire people. Okay? All right? But, but, but what happened is, if I hadn't taken the store, you wouldn't be here right now. You wouldn't be here. Not, it wouldn't have happened. Because God put me in that location so that I could meet a, a, a clarinetist so I could get kicked out of that chapel, so I could meet a clarinetist, and the person that lied on me to get me kicked out of the chapel, when I closed my store, he bought the most expensive stuff in my store. He lied on me, cussed me out every time I spoke to him. That's right. Ask my wife. My wife said, why do you continue to speak to that man? I said, because I'm not going to give him the right to tell me I can't love him. I'm going to speak to him, and I'm going to love him. I don't care what he say about me. And one day he was coming in the building. I was going to CPS. It was downtown at the time. And I saw him, and I said, how you doing today? You feeling all right? He was on his walker, and he had early stages that looked like Parkinson's. And he said, yeah. I said, man, we just took a bread delivery. That bread that, that you like is in the store right now, man. Now I'm going to get you something. He said, thank you very much. And he had been cussing me out a lot. I came back. My wife said, you're not going to Guess who came in the store? I said, John David. She said, how did you? I said, because I told him the bread just came. <laughs> then people came to me and said, why did you let him in your store? I said, because it's my store. It's my store. And I love him. I want him saved. It doesn't matter that he lied on me and hurt me and my family in the middle. You remember how he did that. Everybody was like, why aren't you mad at him? Why aren't you? Hey, I'm hurt. I don't like it, but I love him. This is about me. This is not about that room. This is not about John David. It's about me and my God. Do I really love the truth that he's given me? And that's what it was about. So when I decided to close my store, I had some expensive items in there. I sold artwork. I sold nice things. And he would come and say, how much is that? I, that's 230 something. I'll buy that. How much is that? That's a hundred and something. I'll buy that. You, you, I'll buy all the ice cream you got. He bought the most expensive ice and most, uh, didn't he, Marilyn? And he came, He started coming back in the little cafe eating in there. That's right. So what about this love of the truth thing? Is that delusional? That was God. And because of those moments, because of what God did and showed me, you've been to that little store. 
because of what God showed me. When I closed that store, everybody said, why are you closed? I said, because it's time for me to close it. I want to write, finish writing my book and probably try to get it published. And then Sister Adams messed up and called me and said, you need to see that building across the street from my beauty account. Right? And I said, okay. And I walked in there and I heard reading room. Told my wife that when I walked in there, I looked at I heard reading room. And the rest is history. Sister Tricia was used to start bringing people to to the restaurant. There she is back there. And God used her to start bringing people. But that's not good enough. You got to fall in love with this truth so much that nothing else matters. And when you do that, you can rightly hear and proclaim, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. God bless you and keep you.